Hi, I'd like to take you on a little tour around Google Drive and basically show you the interface and show you how to navigate around. Um, what I find is that people who aren't comfortable with navigating around Drive um, seem to always find it intimidating and they never really get comfortable with it. So it really is worth spending a few minutes just getting comfortable with how this works and knowing what the options are for finding things in here. It really will uh, make you far more confident in using everything else about Drive. So uh, the first thing to know about is there are a number of different categories down the side here and you can view the files in your drive in a number of different ways. So the first uh, important one here is called My Drive and My Drive is any documents that have been created by you. Essentially if you click the Create button and you make one of these files here uh, it will go into this collection here called My Drive. Okay, And you can see the owner list here, the owner is me uh, and generally speaking everything in My Drive will be me because uh, I own it. However, I just want to point out, if I scroll down here, you will see there are some files here that are owned by other people. How can that be if it's in My Drive? I'll get to that in just a moment. So this is My Drive. The other thing to know about when you're in a Drive section here, there's a Sort button at the top, and you can sort the list according to the, a number of different categories. And the categories you get to sort with kind of depend on which view you're in at the moment. So there are a few variables in here. This is why it's good to get familiar with it. So at the moment, I'm looking at this list in terms of last modified. So the most recently changed file or folder is going to be at the top and working its way down um, to the least recent. Now, it can be the last modified, which means the last time this file was changed either by me or somebody else. Last edited by me would be the last time it was actually changed by me. And last opened by me would be the last time this file was opened but not necessarily changed. Maybe I just opened it to have a look and I closed it again. So that would be the last opened. So you can, uh, you can use those three things. Uh, last edited by me, last modified by anyone, and last opened by me. You can also sort it by title. So if you'd happen to like it in alphabetical order, and it will put all the folders first and then list the files underneath that in alphabetical order. Or you can actually search it by the quota used. So if you're looking for, say, the biggest file in here, uh, down to the smallest file, you can, you can sort it that way as well. So the sorting is really quite important um, to get your head around. I, I like to leave mine as last modified. I find that the most useful. But it's good to know what the other options are. Now, that's my drive. It's all the stuff that I made. The next category is called shared with me. And this is stuff that other people have made and they've gone into the share settings and they've shared it with me. So you can see if I look in here at the owner, um, I'm seeing that these files have all been created by other people. Uh, don't be misled by the fact that my name is also showing up on some of these. Sometimes I create things using my work account and I share it with myself at home on my personal account, which I'm using at the moment. So that's why you sometimes see that sort of thing. But all these other files have been owned by other people. Now you might think to yourself, okay, but what if, I, what if there's something in here that I actually want in my own Drive collection. Uh, remember I showed you in Drive how some of those files were in fact owned by other people other than me? Here's why. If I go to one of these documents and I tick it, I have an option up here to add it to my Drive. And when I click that, it will then take that document and will still leave it in the Shared With Me collection, but it will actually make it visible in the My Drive. And you can see there it says My Drive next to the name of the document. If I actually went back to My Drive here, um, you see there it is there. So the owner of that is Jim, but it's showing up in my Drive collection because I asked it to. So anything you get shared with you that you'd actually like to file away in your own collection, just tick it like so, choose the Add to My Drive option up the top there. The next one down is Starred. And when you star a document, you essentially it's like um, highlighting it. So uh, bookmarking a little bit if you like. So for example this working file here, if this was a file I was coming back to regularly and I needed to sort of access it quickly, rather than searching through all my files to find it every time, I can star it and when I go to my starred collection it shows up in the starred collection. There it is right there. So when I'm finished working with this file I would unstar it and it goes away out of that collection. So typically what you'd have in your starred collection is anything that you come back to often or anything that you're working on right now uh, for say the next couple of weeks and then when you finish working on it you unstar it and it goes out of this list. This becomes your list of things you use regularly. The recent list is uh, exactly what it sounds like. It's a list of files that were used recently and um, you can sort it according to different criteria. You can't do this one alphabetically because obviously recent it's all about time. Um, 
but you can search by opened by me, edited by me, or last modified by anyone, just like the other list. Um, it's there. I don't use that often, but it's there in case you need it. There is a thing here called activity, and this is also very similar to um, to recent. The difference is there's no sort options on on the uh, activity one. This is purely just the last things that have happened, regardless of who did them and how they did them. If it was uh, modified by anyone, anywhere, it will show up in this list. That's the activity stream. There is the option to look at your offline files. Now I'm working on a desktop computer at the moment, so I haven't enabled offline because there's really no point on a desktop machine. But if I wanted to, I could click this button here that says enable offline. It now enables the offline setting and it starts, um, you can see up here it says initialing offline status. What it's doing is it's syncing up my documents with uh, my computer. So if my, my internet connection dropped out, I could continue to work on my documents. So you can see there that the files are starting to slowly appear in this list here. That's as they're syncing up and these will now be available offline if I need to work on them. Uh, all items is uh, basically what it says. It's just all items uh, and you can sort it by a number of different ways there um, regardless of whether they're in shared with me or my drive. That's what that's about. And finally there's a bin and the bin is files that you've thrown out and they will sit in the bin until you're ready to empty the bin or I believe it probably empties every 30 days, I, I think it is. So that's all the different categories of the way you can view your drive there. Um, it's really good to know how they work because um, you can see that it does sort of change how you might look for a file. Speaking of looking for a file, the best way to find a file in your drive is to search. So there's a search bar at the top here. So if I uh, wanted to find a file by Jim, for example, I could just type in Jim and it's going to find in any file that has Jim as the sharer or Jim was also shared on or it mentions the word Jim or it has Jim in the file name. So there's a number of different ways you can do that. So um, if I was to search for uh, Australia, for example, let's see, there are probably documents in here that mention the word Australia and they show up in that list. So search is a great way to find things. Now, of course, sometimes you can't remember what the search term was. You don't uh, recall what something was named. But you do maybe remember that it was a PDF and it was shared with you, say. So from this drop down here, the advanced search options, you can search by type, all the different document types, the visibility level, whether it was public, uh, shared with anyone with the link, shared with private or not shared, and the ownership level, so whether it was owned by you or not owned by you. So for example, if I knew someone had given me a PDF, I could tick PDF and it... Well, we're still searching on the word Australia, so we're looking for PDFs with the word Australia. We also want uh, PDFs that were not owned by me, say. And so by by filtering down this thing here, you can uh, you can start to hone in on on specific file types and file kinds. So yes, searching and filtering very very useful. Uh, we've talked about sorting. So this is really kind of important, this sort button. Uh, too many people overlook that and they just always live it in the same view mode all the time. And sometimes uh, you just need a different sort order to see what you want to see. Uh, next to that, you've got two buttons. One looks like little lines, the other has four boxes on it. This is list view and grid view. At the moment, I'm looking at this uh, list of documents in list view. But if I click the button to switch to grid view, <coughs> I'll actually see all of the files and folders in here laid out as little thumbnails so I can actually see what I'm looking for. So again, if I know what I'm looking for, I kind of know what it looks like. Grid view is a great way to do it. The other thing is if, if you've got a folder full of photographs, so for example, I have some photos here, um, you can see that there is a really good way to browse through photographs. Okay. Next to that is the settings. And there are three, what, they're what Google called display density modes. Um, and it de just determines how much data you want showing on the screen. Some people like to go in comfortable mode, and that's when things are a little bit more spread out versus, say, compact mode, where things are packed in tightly together. And it really is a personal preference about how much information you want on the screen at any one time. Uh, personally, I like the cozy view. It's a nice kind of compromise between the two. But you have the option there of comfortable, cozy, or compact. Uh, there are some settings with Drive that you can look at. And... Uh, the most important one probably is this one here that says bold any updated items and I always have that turned on. It just means if I'm looking at a list of files um, that when I go back to my drive, go back to Google Drive, 
when I'm looking at that, you'll notice that some of these are in bold. Those are doc uh, documents that have changed since the last time I looked at them. So if I need to, uh, obviously, if I go shared with me, I have lots of bold stuff because other people are working on these documents. And so all the things here in bold are things that have changed since the last time I looked. That's what that bold is all about. Under that, you've got upload settings. And there's a, a kind of an important thing here, and that is to tick this one that says convert uploaded files to Google Docs format. This means that when you put a file, say a Microsoft Word file or a PowerPoint file or an Excel file into your drive, if this is ticked, it will actually convert it to the corresponding format in Google Docs. So Word becomes a doc, uh, Excel becomes a sheet, and a PowerPoint becomes a slide deck. So you can uh, tick that. If you don't want to convert it, you untick it. And what I um, sometimes recommend to people is that you turn this bottom one on just by clicking it. Let's just go back and have a look. You'll see it's now ticked. Um, if you turn this one on, it will actually ask you every time you upload something whether you want to convert it or not. And for some people who, I mean, I convert everything, so I normally leave that off. But if you sometimes do and sometimes don't, you can turn that on and it will ask you each time what you'd like to do. Um, underneath that, there's a section called Manage Apps. And Manage Apps, uh, when you, you can connect your Google Drive to all sorts of other applications. And this is simply a list of which ones you've connected to. And uh, sometimes if you've got apps that are capable of opening um, more than one file type, you can tell it to be the default here. So just a worthwhile thing to know about, just to be able to come into there and have a look at the apps list. And there is some keyboard shortcuts that are suitable in Drive as well. And if you choose that option there, it just tells you what they are. Uh, I won't dwell on them, but if you're a keyboard kind of person, um, it is worth knowing some of the keyboard shortcuts in Drive. And finally, just uh, because um, Drive stores all your information in the cloud, uh, if you just come down here to the section down the bottom left-hand corner and simply put your mouse over it, it will pop up and it will tell you how much of your Drive quota is being used. And of course, a few months ago, Google moved to a unified Drive quota. So um, rather than have a separate amount of space for Gmail and Photos and Drive, it's all now one space. And this now tells you how that space is being divided up for your particular usage. So yeah, there you go. There is a bunch of um, uh, tips there about how to navigate your way around your Drive how to search, how to sort, how to filter, how to view. Uh, and if you combine all those things together, you should find that your drive using experience is much more comfortable.